you ever speak to me like that again, you better be wearing a cup. Baby steps. Everybody take your positions, please. Here we go. Six, five, four, three, two, rolling. Day and day Unchained. Welcome to Dave and Dave Unchained, a Van Halen podcast. I'm Dave. And I'm Dave. And we are at episode 69, Dave. 69, dudes! 69. So you know what that means. The listeners have been waiting all this time because they knew that you were going to make a big reveal. And you know that I have known you since you're 18 years old. We are 51 years old. And I have bothered you about this for years. And tonight, you're going to pay. So we don't have... We're, there's <laughs> no paying since the first podcast. Well, that, are you kidding me? The truth. But we're not going to use names here to uh, protect the innocent. However... <laughs> We do want details of the situation. When Dave and I used to sleep in the same room like Ernie and Bert with the beds beside each other, right? <laughs> yeah, you remember true. that? Yes. Yeah, it still haunts you. And the um so <laughs> I used to ask him every night before we went to bed. Do you remember what I used to ask you? No, I don't actually. Oh my god. This breaks my heart. You don't remember anniversaries, you don't remember anything. So anyway, I used to ask you and I'm gonna say the line and it, it's gonna remind you of the situation right okay okay how did you get deflowered do you remember how i <laughs> oh, used to oh, oh, i'm sure i blocked that out yes okay <laughs> I, I was I was afraid we were gonna go there. Right, of and, course. Uh, Episode yes. six. Let's go to the news. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't give us without names, no names, no places. You can at least give us your age and what the scenario was. No, no, no. We're not. No, oh, we're not. No, no oh, we're, we're not. No, no, we are not. All right. Well, nope. uh, it's fine. That's all fine. I am just gonna tell everyone here. An incredible apology, because Dave had promised this, and now no, he's not... No, you delivered. had promised this! Let's get that clear! Five and a half years, we've been working up to this episode, and you are dropping the ball. There is no I in we. Okay, alright, alright. <laughs> I had a big reveal set up for myself, but... Well, your life is your business. Well, so. as they say, tit for tat, Dave. Tit that's, for that's, tat. That's fine. And uh, Dave's uh, obviously well not revealing any tit tonight, so... We're going to go on to Van Halen News. Van Halen News. Well, I can't stay depressed too long because David Lee Roth is back, Dave. Holy shit. Well, the VMAs, which stands for Video Music Awards, we wonder what that even is anymore, uh, considering that MTV is not MTV that we grew up with, right? So MTV still has the Video Music Awards, which is shocking considering that it's not a music channel. MTV stands for Music Television, but for some reason, they have chosen not to do that. I still don't understand why. I understand that they like all the reality shows, and I think that's great. But I think they should have, like, a MTV channel for reality, like MTV Reality, MTV Sports, MTV This. But they should have kept the original MTV MTV. Well, anyway... That said, it is MTV's actual 40th anniversary. So this year, this past summer, I think August, is when they turned 40 years old. Well, at this current VMAs, we're also celebrating, not really celebrating, but looking back, 25 years to when Van Halen reunited on the VMAs. But that wasn't really the reason why Dave was there. What they did was they brought back some of the old iconic video artists like Madonna and Cindy Lauper and Dave. And Dave came out and holy shit, he looked great. He's in amazing shape. And in fact, if I was him, and, and he, I have to say, this would be petty of me, but Dave took the high road. I would have gone in the press and waved to Gene and said, hello, Gene, because he was in like really good fit 
shape. He was in a leather vest and I think leather pants and no sleeves and he's showing his tats and he had, his hair was all crewed up the way it was. I'm gonna say, what was it like in late 2018 when he was promoting the tattoo cream? He had that sort yeah. of short yeah, military. Yeah, something like yeah. that. I don't think it was a leather vest. That's the vest he wears all the time. Is it? Like it's part of a, isn't that like part of a suit or something like that? You know what? I, mean, I think you're right. It he loves be. that vest. Yeah, he loves Loves that Love. vest. Maybe it wasn't a leather vest. I'm sorry. For some reason, I thought it was leather. And he had the shades. I mean, he looked like a rock star. And he was in full Dave mode. He was doing press on the red carpet, and he was interviewing with different people, taking photos, posing in different things, and he just was total, total hardcore Dave. So this was really cool. So the most interesting part of this whole segment, so his whole deal with the show was he came out and announced video of the year, and he did like a little, you know, shtick or whatever before he came out. But it was hard to hear him. I think it was something was with the mic or something. It wasn't great. Do no, I, I think his voice was shot. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it was shot. Because he did not sound as strong as I've heard him in the past. Right. So he announced video of the year, a little Nas X one, right? But the most interesting part of the evening was when he was on the red carpet. Us Weekly did like a little, like, you know, quick red carpet interview with him. A couple things came out of it. So I thought it was funny. He started the interview by, obviously, you know, you can't see the woman interviewing him. You, you can hear her voice. She sounds like a very young woman. And he he says, yeah, I sang to your parents when they were growing up. Like, he was almost sort of identifying himself to her. And she was like, I know who you are. He said he addressed for the first time Eddie Van Halen. So what he did say, he said he's either in heaven, raised in hell, or he's in hell, consequently in heaven. Read into that as you wish, and he would have me say it just like that. I carry on the spirit deliberately. Then he always keeps dropping a nod to Alex. I just spoke to Alex Van Halen. We're about to celebrate our 50th year of ragging on each other. It was just kind of weird. He keeps mentioning it, Alex. It was, because like that came out of nowhere. Yeah. It was like he tacked it on at the end. He's like, oh, no, yeah, I've been talking to Alex. Like he had to slip that in, it, it's, right? It's like a strange tick he has now that he has to constantly mention Alex. Now, part of me wonders if he's actually talking to Alex or if he's just sticking it up. I have no idea. But the most interesting part of this whole thing, I mean, it was a nice little thing he said about Eddie, was when they asked him what he's up to, he said he's going to be in Las Vegas for New Year's. He didn't say specifics, but he said that he's going to be carrying on, that he said, I'm going to Vegas on New Year's. There's lots of Vegas DNA in what I do. And he sort of like intimated that he's carrying on the Van Halen tradition. So I'm wondering if he's going to pick up his Las Vegas residency at the House of Blues at the Mandalay Bay in Vegas, but let's be honest, you know, a lot of stuff has been announced already. Like, if people are going to make plans for New Year's Eve, he better announce that show soon. So, I mean, at uh, this taping, when we're doing it, he hasn't announced anything. But I'm wondering if he's doing that. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, I was curious because he didn't give any specifics. So I'm, I'm wondering what he's planning. But yeah. yeah, you're right. I mean, the clock is ticking and normally, you know, New Year's stuff is announced by this time. Oh, yeah. So what's he waiting for? Yeah, no. And anyway, especially with COVID and everything, like, people need to make reservations and planes and all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, we're, you know, we're in the... Right. Yeah, I mean, is he just going to Vegas to hang out and that's the last we're going to hear about it? Well, she did say kind of, what what are you up to professionally? It wasn't like, hey, what what are you doing for, <laughs> here for Christmas you, break? I mean... What it, are you doing yeah, for New Year's? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> we interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Hey guys, just a quick news update here. This just in, David Lee Roth announced that he's going back to the House of Blues in his David Lee Roth Rocks Vegas show at Mandalay Bay. He'll be playing New Year's Eve, December 31st, 2001. Also, January 1st, 5th, 7th, and 8th. All information is at davidleeroth.com and you can buy tickets at livenation.com. But another interesting piece of news that came out with Dave, and I thought this was really interesting. So, Nikki Six, the bassist for Motley Crue, has been out promoting his book, The First 21, which is interesting. It's about the first 21 years of his life 
prior to joining Motley Crue. He was out doing press. Somehow it came out about David Lee Roth was asked to join the stadium tour. I think in the place of Poison. This is before Poison joined. This was when, I guess, they had Def Leppard and Motley Crue, and they were looking for that third, right? Now, also, right. Joan Jett's on the bill, but this is when they were looking for that third. And they asked Roth. But apparently, Roth had said, I don't open for bands that I influenced, which I thought was great, considering, you know, when Van Halen took the open slot for Bon Jovi back in 1995, and that made me think of that moment. I mean, let's be honest, if David Lee Roth was on that stadium tour, if that fucking thing ever happens, that's a huge, huge tour to be on. That's probably right. big money, big exposure, but he chose not to because, and this is this is all pre-COVID, folks. This is not about COVID because we're talking about when they were planning this tour. We were talking about like early 2019, late 2018, like that tour has been in the works for a long time. The tickets went on sale in 2019. It is now 2021, and that fucking show's not happening until next year. Now, right. We're talking about the setup. This is pre-COVID, pre-all this stuff. And then um, Nikki Six got a little annoyed that the press ran with that. But it's a really kind of a big thing. He says, the media takes one sentence out of my new book and it makes it a headline. But apparently that's in the book. I love when someone writes a book and they're doing press on the book and someone asks them a question about something that's in the book and the person complains about it. That drives me crazy. It's so funny. It's like you wrote it. It's I, in I, the book. I can't, right? and, I can't stand And Nikki Six knows about the press. Oh, I mean, come yeah. on. I know. Really? I know. After all this time? Yeah. And now the, you're complaining? Yeah. And the answer is very simple. You don't want people to know about that? Don't put it in the fucking book. Okay? Right. So it's like, right. don't don't give me shit. It's like, oh, that's clickbait. No, no. You know what that is? That's an interesting fact. And you know what that also shows? That also shows that he's got some integrity. He's like, I'm not going to open for these bands. These bands all came after me. So, unbelievable. Dave's still a class act, and he's such an interesting character. No matter what he does, he's always really, you know, spinning the wheel. Don't you think? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Never a dull moment. Yeah. So. Now, yeah. we had a little bit, a little taste of Alex Van Halen. A little bit. Number one, obviously, everybody knows at this point that Charlie Watts, the beloved drummer of the Rolling Stones, has passed away, which is horrible, and I love Charlie, and I actually cried when, when he passed. But Alex wrote a little something that he sent to the Van Halen news desk that said, Dear Charlie, Godspeed. Alex Van Halen, and he showed a black and white photo of Charlie. So that was sad, but I think he's looking to, you know, nod to his elder drummer, and, and I'm sure he was a Stones fan, that's for sure. But the other part of Alex Van Halen that was really wild was someone spotted Alex driving on the Los Angeles freeway in his 911 GT2 black RS Porsche. And I don't know how they knew it was him, but they were filming him. And as he approaches the car that's filming him, he playfully kind of twisted his baseball cap to the side and made a funny face and then just drove away. Obviously, he's alive and well, so that's good. Obviously, we want to note that. But Dave, what did you make of that? A little too stalkery for my taste. Yeah, it was a little creepy, you know, like, yeah, I mean, the guy's uh. just driving his car and. Hey, how the hell do you even know? The weird part about the whole thing is the guy is filming him even before he approaches. So that's, oh, yeah, it's almost like they passed him, knew it was him, yeah. and then they slowed down waiting for him to yeah, pass. Something like that. Something like that, but it was weird. Yeah. Now, Dave, you better get out the Tylenol because Rolling Stone came out with their top 500 greatest songs of all time. Now, you know Rolling Stone. They oh, love, here we go. They here love we go. to churn it up. So now they did this back in 2014, I believe it was so they're doing sort of a revamp of it now let me see dave if you can guess did van halen make the top 500 it's what the top 500 albums of songs, all time songs songs yes yes they did okay how many van halen songs do you think are in the top 500 one okay which song do you think it is jump okay that's correct now where do you think it landed 400 Okay, well, you're right, it was.